Hello and welcome. Welcome everyone back to this month's Talking Stick show. So I am joined by the Divine Feminine crew. We have the Galacticus <laughs> Andrew Bartis. Hello. Hello, Dale Paleface Tobin. Yes. <laughs> welcome back. We're back on the ship. We are. Good to be aboard. Yes, good to be aboard. We welcome the Divine Feminine Warrior, Laura Massey. Hey, Laura. Oh, a warrior as well. Yes, you are. You well, got she's the title. upgraded herself this week. <laughs> <laughs> so three, three abused light worker terms. <laughs> <laughs> so we we have just finished our combined therapy UK. So we've been busy for the last two weeks. It's been absolutely incredible. Let's talk a little bit about the combined and the experiences before we go into today's show. So Laura, how has the last few weeks been for you? Absolutely amazing. We had all of them amazing clients from all over the world, from the USA. A lovely lady came from Australia too. Every one of them went away with huge changes that they're still processing. And for us too, as practitioners, all three of us, um, we, I know, speaking just not only for myself, I'm sure we've all grown as well. We learned something more about this cutting-edge technology that we're using, um, what works with people. And it's just been, for me, I'm still processing all the things that have gone on. As have I. You know, my personal experience in watching both you and Laura grow and then the people that were assisting us, Tina, shout out to you. Rich, shout out to you. You guys were absolutely amazing. Uh, but watching the two of you grow, deep into the sessions and like Dale's like, I think I'm tired. I'm like, go on the mat, relax. You know, we've got, we've got, we've got this. We had such a perfect scheduling process down and that we've done this enough times. It's, it's like, you know, it's like repetition creates the illumination. And then each time we get illuminated and have a unique healing, like uh, when we were doing that hip healing on Bob and then afterwards for days, you could just see his hip Bob in all different ways that he never had done been able to do before or getting the one tear out of the one girl that was impossible to get the one tear out of. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the massage gun normally yes. does that. <laughs> yeah. or, or the abductor pain. <laughs> You're, You're muted. muted. So, yeah, the, honestly, some of the funny things on the massage gun, uh, Sarkis on his stomach when we did his abs. Yeah. Like that was the funniest thing ever. Like I've never seen someone laugh so much when you've been doing gun in the abs. Like he was crying, just constantly crying every time we touched them. <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> See when you go into a deep, deep, deep yeah, and I when you go it. into a deep when you go into a deep laughter response for there, you are breaking something mega on the person's core. It's such a huge breakup because that's the only thing that'll break up that serious stick energy. Or as we say, serious stump in some cases. Yes, serious yeah, tree. So, yes, the serious <laughs> tree, exactly. And that's what you were working on him with. Like chipping yeah. away step by step of a small axe until it slowly comes apart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and we, then our we, dinners. Oh, my God. Our dinners where everyone got together and was able to share all the different experiences they were going through. That was really nice, too. Yeah, sharing the music, the dancing in the kitchen. Cooking together. Having to ban Lightworker music for Dale. And he <laughs> oh, had to expand his musical horizons for healing. <laughs> so so I, I was doing a it was I think it was on the second day I was doing some uh, sessions and all of a sudden I had loads of WhatsApp messages, but because I was focused on the healing, I didn't look at them. Then I looked at them like two an hour and a half late and I had about ten messages from Andrew saying, Turn that light worker shit off. <laughs> so I went in and I burst out laughing. Then I had this realization that my brain was still stuck in that kind of light worker mode for music, really spiritual music. But working with Andrew, is, I'm able to expand myself playing trans, playing all sorts of different varieties of music. And it's completely changed everything for me, like putting Metallica on for someone or something so different, uh, what's needed in the moment, except just the same yeah. shit. So I got stuck in my own way, and I appreciate you for pointing that out, Grandmaster yes. of the Office, Andrew. <laughs> Stop playing that light worker music and all of a sudden look at him expand. He's growing into a whole all the other music that's out there. And it's no doubt that the music shifts. 
Yes. The music shifts stuff inside of you. Like playing those <laughs> whale sounds for individuals or everybody simultaneously was their own unique healing. Yeah. Yeah, because we had times we had, I think, four people yep. or five people in the one room, big room. We had um, all doing their different processes, some people on the PEMF mats, uh, some people on the table with the lights and the cranial sacral and the magnets. Um, sharing that combined experience of the well music and affecting everybody in a different way. It was beautiful and amazing to see. And the chemistry between us all, and and because we've worked together for quite a long time now and we've had a lot of sessions together, it's just innately we know what's needed in the moment. And it's just, yeah, it's really, really wonderful to work with you guys. And everyone who was there made it so special with their unique experiences because some of the experiences I saw there have expanded my knowingness of psychic surgery and other modalities as well, especially the PEMF mat. Like I'm learning more and more about that each time I work with it. And it's just, yeah, blowing my mind each time. And adding more modalities as we go along. I mean, Tina uh, Winther has an absolutely amazing voice and she was doing some vocal sound healing with us. So just what we can add each time. You know, something else we had some on the PMF, Matt, we had some miracle level graphs where, um, what was his name? Um, Vincent. Vincent. So for of his 60 minute session, around 38 minutes, he was absorbing 400 hertz, which is the max the machine can do. And for the rest of the time, he was around 300 hertz, which is unheard of on those machines. Earlier today, we were talking to the, the main guy that's the distributor for the mats. And he couldn't believe the level of graphs that we were getting that fast. Because one of the unique things about PMF, PMF field therapy, therapy, people who have uh, been overdosed on field therapy, it takes a very long time for them to get back up in the ability to absorb natural radiation again. And within, within the first session, we were blowing people at 150, 200, and 300 hertz for an extended period of time. And the other thing is um, the fact that they have infrared sauna, followed by flotation, maybe followed by a massage, Mm -hmm. um, CST under the light with the magnets, and then they go on the mat. So they're really opened up. They've opened up their frequencies. They're deeply relaxed. What it really proves is we can heal field therapy overload. What doesn't matter what's what's if it's electromagnetic, static, or uh, EM field, or scalar, whatever. We can clear it out of the damaged frequency very fast. And we had a great with Bob at the end. So Bob had something stuck and it slowly started unraveling. And the last session yes. I had with him, he said to me, he's like, Dale, I think I'm going to do this by my fire when I get home. And I looked at him and said, no, we're going to get this fucker out now. Yeah, now. <laughs> yes. so he got it out and he start, his body started going. Then all of a sudden, so Laura was doing cranio on Bob for a few days and his tailbone just, there was something really stuck in there. And on the last day, Laura started releasing the tailbone. I started getting, and we all had part to play in it. But to see that, it was just, yeah. I was just like, yes, this shit works. This shit works. Yes. It does. It does. When will we be coming to the United States is the question. Probably in the fall. We're planning planning it now. So um, with that... We had a really amazing time, but there was an expansion, which is what created today's title of show. What is wrong with the divine feminine? Laura, I want to start with you, the master, mistress of master divine feminism, (laughs) who has seen it from all the different sides. And in general, without any of us attacking anybody, what's wrong with femininity today and what's right with it too? So there's nothing basically wrong with the original um, sentiment of the sacred feminine or the divine feminine, that nurturing, creative aspect that's in all of us, not, not just the females. We can all carry that. But what's happened with like so many um, things in the light worker industry, it's been polarized it's been taken over it's been made into something extreme which 
is then created something that is anti the divine masculine. And it's it's something that's gone too far. If you're putting down, if you're having to put down the divine masculine counterpart in this polarity, then that's not the idea of the sacred feminine. Dale, what about for you? So I've done a, some shows with women who do women's circles and like feminine circles and stuff. And throughout time, I've seen it time and time again where they say it's all about the sacred feminine, but they despise men and they all have men issues. So you get a lot of people practicing uh, sacred feminine sacred feminine work and they end up hating the other male. So I've seen it bastardized. I've seen the light, like Laura said, the light worker community overuse the word for marketing and some of the teachers out there are even teaching true divine feminine, divine masculine work. It's just all polarized light worker garbage. Uh, not all of it's light worker garbage, but a lot of it I've seen throughout the years and years of doing this is. Um, so that's my take on it, really. And for me, it's uh, a lot with Dale and Laura's sentiment. Having watched culture change since 2012 to 2014, there was a much higher acceptance of the divine feminine 2012 to 14. And then the bastardization that you, you just talked about began to take over with books by major publicators that were feminism, a political movement, semi seeded with spiritual concepts such as yoga and mindfulness. And then from 2014 to 2017, mindfulness tried to take over the feminine community and it made a deep, deep impression on, we'll just say more of the leftist politics versus the right politics, because right is generally older people, not younger people, but the older people were the hippies. So many in our, in like 2014, 2015, if you were to look at the general audience graph and ages that were there, it was the 50, 60, and 70-year-olds who would be listening to shows like this now. And there would be virtually nothing in the 18 to 23 or 18 to 36. It was all 46 plus. That was 10 years ago. Now it's balanced in the 60-year-olds and 65-year-olds and 70-year-olds no longer are listening because many of them have passed on or moved on to different subject matters. Now we have an equal grouping with different sense of political spiritual views inside of them. You have the man haters because of abuse. You have the political man haters, not that they've been abused, but there's a perception of abuse. And then you have the money grubbing virtual divine feminists who will make sure that every nipple is showing in every picture and everything has a, a gloss over image and a perfected this or that behind them. That's not real divine femininity. That's showing off your looks. And unfortunately, the vanity of the modern times of the social media star has taken over spiritual communities. Okay? With that said, what's wrong? What's, well, what's really wrong? It's the communities and the perceptions of individuals. No matter what, a traumatized person is going to act through their traumas or to act out their traumas. But if a person actively works on themselves, you don't act through your traumas. You deal with them in the moment. I mean, the whole idea is the balance of the divine masculine and the divine feminine inside you. And if that is out of balance, then there is some healing required. So is the bastardization of um, the divine feminine, is that related to woke at all, Andrew? Yes. Unfortunately, woke went extreme and betrayed women by putting people in the LBGTQI transition communities into their bathrooms, into their sports, into their et cetera, places they had just gotten the value of their rights in, which then split the community even further. So generally, this is a leftist ideology, and it's the righties who are saying, hey, women just have these rights. If we separate political left and right and just go down to the concept, should a man who's going through transition be in a bathroom changing with women? That's the question. That's a political question and a scientific question, a faith question. It's, but it's what damages our society now. 
if there were true ways to monitor and manage that, things would be fine. But unfortunately, you will always have people who will use the awoke agenda for abuseful purposes. And that's unfortunate for the woke agenda. It has a very beneficial aspect to separating some of the taboos that keep humans separate. But in the current society we have, too many abusers are at the front of this line of power. Okay? I support the communities, but what I don't for it will support is a forced agenda I must apply to without question. I will always keep my sovereignty. I will always keep my independence, no matter what side tries to dictate to me. So what are some of the aspects of this abused divine feminine energy? Okay, so here's a really classic one. Many of the blue-haired leftists believe every woman is sexually abused. It's not so. It's a lot, well into the 50%, but it is not 90% something they regularly tries to quote in articles, podcasts, etc. Worldwide. If it were worldwide 90% sexual abuse, things this world would look drastically different. The baby raping lizard wizards would have already won. Okay? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> they would have already won and we would be completely submissive. Because if it's that high for women, it would be that high for men too. That's why no, I say that it hovers around the 50% worldwide. But that doesn't it's... mean one culture has less or more. That's true. The different cultures and different wealth gaps have different rates of that abuse because it's a matter of who's enforcing and catching them. Now, let's look at abuse. Abuse is not always sexual abuse. It's verbal abuse, physical abuse, and a variety of other things that alter the personality. If we were to look back to the Johnny Depp trial with... Um, and, and um, Amber Heard, clearly that woman is disturbed, okay? Whether you agree with me or not, it's not the point. There was a clear separation by the jury that didn't believe a word that was coming out of her mouth. The jury decided that. I didn't, okay? And the woke media tried to defend her to the end. And when you empower somebody who is clearly disturbed, or empower a Me Too movement that has no justification for proof, you're innocent and to prove him guilty, and the standard rule of law, that's what's wrong with society and the feminisms that follow abuse first, abuse the abuser first and let the chips fall where they are, whether it's true or not. Many people have been ruined by accusations of abuse or misconduct or whatsoever, and it comes out later, they completely made it up. Or it comes out later, it was worse, like Harvey Weinstein, even worse. Or Epstein, worse. But the truth has to come out. But the thing is, during the peak of the Me Too movement, it was only one side being heard. The woman is always right. And unfortunately, that's tyranny. Yeah, and in the, um, the Depp, Amber, Johnny Depp and Amber situation, so Amber was using her divine feminine energy yeah. in a perverted way to get the results she wanted. Well, I will make my own statement. The psychologist that interviewed her gave her what's called histrionic um, uh, um, personality disorder, meaning she makes shit up and believes it as true. And she is incapable of actually knowing the difference of what she made up and what she didn't. In her mind, it is that way. And she'll pass lie detector texts with that in knowing this. It's a fundamental damage at a very early part of the mental development. Okay? Because they you, become you, that way and they're, un, they're literally unchangeable. Because you, you can see it within her. There's no emotion at all. Literally right. no emotion there. It's just, it's completely like blank. And it's right, I'm running by a script now. Um, right. And that's something she did with the, like, it feels like she kind of just went to attack him to make sure he sounded like the one who's fucked up. But again, she was the one who right. fucked up, which is a classic right. narcissism technique, isn't it? Yeah, well, next level narcissism. Next level, called yes. Yes, right. yes. And she was taking the, the beautiful, sacred sort of vulnerability of the divine feminine and just using it for her own purposes. Well, there was more. there's a lot more to this. We don't want to just isolate her. Mm. We're using that because many people saw 
the court case yeah, yeah. and saw her in the interviews lying, straight up lying, and then getting caught in lie after lie after lie after lie. Okay. That, and as for well, the person, I didn't punch you, I hit you. There was physical violence back to him, but not at the level of bloody abuse she was crying. Okay. Couples do get violent with each other, but he's the one that lost the tip of his finger. He's the one that got knocked out. He's the one that had the black and blue eyes the majority of the times. Once again, I'm not praising one side or other. I'm using it as an example to understand what's wrong with the divine feminine. And don't get me wrong. There'll be a what's wrong with the divine masculine show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because it needs to be done too. But yeah. for the sake of this conversation of what's wrong with it, it's what can individuals do now? How do we help the divine feminine get out of forced tyranny to others? How do we get them out of acting, acting out their trauma onto others, projecting, projecting energies onto others when they should be going through the journey of healing themselves? It goes right back to the basics, though, of self-love and mm -hmm. self-care and the self-nurturing to discover your own authenticity. And then support from family structures. Unfortunately, when you run a tyrannical lifestyle, you, you, people vacate your life very really fast. They don't want the tyranny in their life. No, it's also treading on other people's journey and sure. um, projecting your views onto somebody else. Like the person who's forever depressed and forever depressed and pulls their lover into the forever depression. Okay, mm -hmm. We've seen this throughout history. It doesn't matter what era of the history is. They reach the melancholy. They can never get out and pull everybody into it with them, which becomes drama queen. So unhealed traumas, the answer is you got to begin to heal the traumas. You individually, not as a, as a collective culture. Okay? Now, one of those traumas, whether it's sexual abuse, giving birth, you have lots of issues with the divine feminine areas, such as, um, for lack of better terms, when a lot of women give birth, they have what's called a blowout on their divine parts. And I'm trying to simply not be overly graphic, a blowout like a tire. And they have to get that fixed. And there's the vaginal wall. Laura, you want to talk about that? Well, I don't know about that particularly, but I do know, yes, particularly as you It's get... not a real blowout. No. I'm just using it as a car <laughs> term. <Okay? laughs> Laura needs to tighten this one up. <laughs> yeah. Part of the... Um... Well, the reason we're bringing that up is because as part of combined therapies, we're now looking at introducing for women, not just the divine feminine, for women, this is something called haifu, which is about um, using sonar ultrasound, ultrasound in, the, um, in the vagina so that it actually tightens the vaginal walls and repairs some of the damage from childbirth and things like that. And some forms of abuse. Okay. Or overuse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Overstretching, tear marks. Um, also, it can deal with uh, lack of lubrication. Yes. So um, I actually took part in this and the last time we did combined. We had a client who wanted to do it. And I decided um, it was something that will benefit me. It also deals with um, incontinence yep. um, and, and many other things. So I actually went and, and did this. And we're, as I say, we're going to introduce it as a, a special package for um, our lady guests, our lady clients, if they'd like to do this in the future, because it actually works. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really great treatment especially to have with combined when you've got the healing of the PEMF mat afterwards you've got the float um, you've got the things you can do beforehand to relax you which is part of what we do on combined to actually totally relax um, the ANS relax your parasympathetic nervous system um, so that it, it's a very painless procedure um, and it only takes about half an hour but the results are incredible uh, as I say, it's something that we're looking to include. So HIFU, H-I-F-U, we highly encourage that you all look it up. Whether, whether you're a man or a woman, and it's a form of ultrasound therapy 
that uses a special wand that goes in and slowly turns and turns and turns and uses the ultrasound therapy to help repair the walls, the wall, the, the cellular structure of the walls and a variety of other things. That's how the general science works. Now, when we decided, Laura decided to do it, so we, we already knew that we were going to offer this to women. But there are things that can also be done for men also. And what we want to talk about here, even though it's on this show, it's called shockwave ultrasound therapy. And that's specifically for men who have erectile dysfunction, have no actual blood flow through the area. Similar to, similar to the HIFU, there's a device that hits your, your, your phallus uh, with ultrasound. It helps rebuild re, re, uh, the, the cellular walls and take the damage away from scar tissue, which is so vital for men who are having ED. Now, that's something that will be introduced later in the year, but we wanted to start with the women um, so that they have their unique chance to, to see what it can do and how life can change for you. And hopefully I'll find out. <laughs> we got another couple of days before you could restart. <laughs> yes, yes. I think they say leave it five to seven days before any intimacy. Um, so, yeah. Laura, what just was it? Back from the retreat. <laughs> Laura, what was it like leading up to it for you then? Just some of the feelings and obviously the experience you went through, like from a feminine point of view, what was it? What did it feel like? Well, obviously there are the underlying ner nervousness because you're not, even though the lady talks you through it, that uh, you're, you know, it's it's like having a smear or something else. You're, it's a slight body invasion, you could say. But um, I think also it helped the fact I've been doing the mat and so on beforehand, and that certainly helped afterwards. So I say not for the pain. But just as a settling modality, using the PMF mat afterwards and also being part of the combined therapies really helped me. But um, leading up to it, yeah, it, it was fine. Um, and especially going in there when you speak to the lady, she's, you know, very knowledgeable, very helpful, and you feel very relaxed. It's probably easier than having a colonic, to be fair. So... I have to say this. When Laura told us she was going to do it, the amount of jokes that came, Dale and I, and Laura too, um, it's also known as vaginal tightening. Okay? So for women who have had some issues giving birth, sensitivity, you can get that tightness back, which is a gigantic leap in confidence. Yes. As well as the orgasmic potential that's there. Now, Dale, short of the jokes that we had, if anything, it helped Laura go and do it even more. It took away from the serious nature of what was going on. <laughs> Can you remember any of them? What, some of the jokes? Yes. Um, it, there was always that moment where we went, come on, Laura, don't be tight. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> we, we see, so we seem to use the word tight a lot. <laughs> and yes. We were all having jokes, what she's going to be like when she comes back, like, Going forward, like, walk. Walk. Yes. <laughs> yes, you'll notice I didn't use my saddle stool that I usually yes. use for CST. <laughs> <We noticed. laughs> I, sat, I sat in a chair. You do sort of, it's a natural thing. You do sort of want to keep your legs together, but, but I'm soon over that. Other than not sitting in a saddle chair, you were normal. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> I was. And that's, that's just, I could have done, absolutely. They say don't ride a horse afterwards. And as I say, don't have sex for five to seven days. And, and basically, that's it. Um, sometimes if it hits a nerve, you get a, a sudden sort of little jolt, but nothing that's uh, um, painful in any way at all. I, I really highly recommend it. And we'll be asking right, so you in a week's time, Laura, <laughs> for an update. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did, it Did it work? Did it work? <laughs> well, if you're going to give these um, treatments to clients, you need to know. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, Dale will be the second tester because yes. he's got a room. <laughs> We've had some really, really funny times on this, on doing the combine. We really have. Like having this banter has just made it so much, I'd say, easier to break up energies and just the funness and lightness of it all, even though it was serious. 
we really needed that com- air comedy in between everything. We really did. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. So divine so, feminine, guys. Divine feminine. <laughs> exactly. So people from the chat room, if you'd like to ask questions, go ahead and put them on into the chat room questions. We can answer anything you like about HIFU, ultrasound therapy, combined healing therapy, or continue our conversation of what's wrong with the divine feminine, what can we do to fix it, and what can we do to understand it better. Okay, so so why are women going into these extremes of abusing the divine feminine? Uh, no, counter abusing the divine masculine. Ah, oh, counter abusing. Yes. yes. Okay. Projection. Okay. And if Through you know, their own unhealed traumas. Because politics has taken over the debate structure. Politics is not emotions. Right. So here's an example. Every woman wants an emotionally balanced man. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. So if an emotionally balanced man found himself in a relationship with an unbalanced woman, what do you think would happen? Yes. The first thing the emotionally balanced man would be, get yourself together. Yes. She would then project onto him, I'm fine. You're what's wrong with you. Yeah. He would then go, well, you're projecting on me and I'm not going to let you do that because I'm an emotionally balanced person. Yes. I'm not going to let you abuse me. Then she goes, no, you're abusing me. (laughs) And the cycle continues. So for every woman that wants an emotionally balanced man out there, that's what's going to happen if you're not balanced yourself. So it's taking on the responsibility of getting yourself emotionally balanced. Exactly. And the same thing, vice versa, for men who aren't emotionally balanced. And when you have two emotionally balanced people constantly accusing each other of the same thing they're doing, you create this polarity that's unhealable between the two of them. You just go round and round in circles. Mm -hmm. Until one gets vicious. Yeah. Okay. It's extremely destructive to a relationship, either one or mm-hmm. both. Okay. So let me go back to the emotionally balanced man meets or uh, uh, unemotional a woman meets very successfully emotionally balanced man, and the first time the emotionally balanced woman does whatever, how does an emotionally balanced man react? How does an unemotionally no, no. The man, the, the, man man is, is, the man is emotionally balanced. Yeah. The woman may not always. Okay. But the first time the woman shows unbalanced emotions, how does the man react? By trying to find, find balance for the other person. What's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And as soon as you go, what's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me, which begins the cycle of pulling them into their emotions. Okay. which aren't balanced, which puts the man in the forceful situation to balance their emotions. Yeah. Okay? And then the man backs off and goes, no, you're not doing your individual part of balancing your emotions. And they pack away and pull away. How does a woman react when they're not, or the man's not pulled close to them? Yeah, they get needy. They get needy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay? And demanding. And tantrumy. A variety of other things happen. Yeah. Now, for any woman that wants an emotionally balanced man, be equal to them. Okay. Again, this show is not about to beat up on the witch, just to show the cycles and patterns. And there'll be an emotional process for what's wrong with the divine masculine, too. Okay. But in this situation, let's say you have an emotionally balanced woman who has done the healing and is now looking for an emotionally balanced man in a world. That's very questionable. Okay, <laughs> they become picky, they become selective, and their emotional balance becomes an illusion because they have to walk the fine line of holding their divine feminine, holding their truth, and holding in the buildup of energies and the need to be needed and wanted, and all the other things that go through an emotionally person, a person who's an emotional person. Until they find somebody who has all the illusions of being just right or Mr. Right now, and then something happens and the abuse cycle continues. And they get more angry and more angry at the generality of men, which then drives them out of their emotional balance into political, um, political religious experiences that shit on men every day. And it's an unfortunate truth for a significant portion of the women the women in American society right now. 
So what you're saying is the woman can start off emotionally balanced yes. and then in having to handle, say, many relationships where... The man was fully the, unbalanced. Right. They're starting to to lose their own grounding in authenticity. Yes. Because you, it you, get, you get this a lot in spiritual relationships as well. Well, if one, say, muggle goes with someone who's spiritual, it happens all the time where the spiritual one is out of balance and more out of balance than the actual of a person who doesn't do any work because of spirituality. And that's a classic divine feminine person. You see time and time again, uh, where the let, like myself and Laura, we've let the light worker run us and it's taken us down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, just actually just before Christmas, I did a consultation with a lady, um, got her own spiritual business, got the stuff going for her. And she wanted me to look at her website and then give her physical advice, spiritual advice, coaching advice like I do with people. And so she said, be brutal with me. Well, you guys kind of know when I do roasting, right? And I go, are you really sure? Yes. And, and then I said, how much did you pay for this website? And she goes, well, what do you mean? Well, brutal, your tits are hanging out in this video and your nipples are showing. Do you know this? Yes, I look great. Oh, it's yeah. not about how good you look. Mm. Your website says I'm sexual, but the texts don't match that. Unfortunately, she got sold her good looks versus her teachings. Okay, and they charged her twenty five thousand dollars to do it because the pictures were sixteen thousand dollars, and the rest of the website is pure garbage. And I had to tell her that. Whoever wrote your light worker prose and word salads had no idea what you did. And um, yes, you look beautiful in every picture, in every image, all over the website. You have side pics, shadow pics, angel wings coming out of your ass. <laughs> you look beautiful. Are you selling your beauty or are you selling your teachings? And then she had to come to terms with that. Well, what do I do with the website? Tone the pictures down first. Okay. <laughs> Change the salad. Make it you. And for any woman in business, unless you're on a running an OnlyFans page, it's your teachings before your beauty. Please hear that. It's your teachings before your beauty. Your beauty is important, but it should not be flaunted on every page with every profile pic. No, because your inner beauty will shine through if you're doing the work anyway in a, in a normal picture without having to resort to all that. Mm -hmm. Yes. The overuse of the sexuality. The overuse of the sexuality. And the sensuality. Yeah. So, Laura, we have a question from Rumble. Were you awake through the entire procedure? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. How long did it take? About half an hour. And um, the lady... The practitioner talks you through everything they're doing. Um, so you're totally reassured every time because the actual machine looks like an extremely large uh, dildo is the only way yeah. to describe it. But uh, not terribly thick. No, no. Just long. Just just long. <laughs> I think, my goodness, is that going to fit all the way up me? And, of course, it does. Anyways, it's got a little little a thing on the tip that does the ultrasound therapy part to it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you feel a bit of a buzzing as well going on. But that's it. You're awake through the whole thing. Yeah, that's an interesting... Did any, um, did any of you guys see... So I've seen it time and time again as well. People in feminine groups going on about witch trials all the time. And they go on yes. about the lineage. And this this really, honestly, like, I have to hold my tongue when they say it. They're like, oh, my, we've been burnt so many times at the stake that we've got to take power back this lifetime. It's like, no, no. <laughs> my ear's just burning. <laughs> yeah, because you, any of the masculine out there, could have been a, a female in a past life and that happened to you too. Yes. It's not just the women this lifetime. Here's another statement from Janine. One thing, once I, I noticed that mom groups, that many of the moms would just bitch about their husbands 
treat them like they're they're one of their kids and they wonder why they can't stand the husband. Why? It's exactly the point. It's an emotionally unbalanced person who has no one to talk to, no one to vent to their emotions, whether they have a counselor or not. And once they get in the cycle of complaining with somebody else who complains about theirs, it creates a vicious cycle of dopamine release, which makes them um, abusive versus, you know, talking to the husband versus belittling them. It just shows they're not doing their own inner work. Or they'd rather do the negative work than the inner work Mm. because the negative work is more fun for them. Mm. Okay, and you wonder how's you how are you ever going to have a real relationship if you treat the man you love that way and you sleep next to him? You're not only violating his energy, you're violating your own energy. Get a fucking divorce. You 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 you're a person that's a coward to leave the comfort of what it's been, what's your life is. Now stop being a coward. Stop belittling him. Just get a divorce. Find another man so you don't have to belittle him anymore. Unfortunately, that truth doesn't come to those people because they are comfortable where they are and they don't want to lose the quality of life that they have. And they'd rather just bitch about the man versus do anything real to change themselves. Does that give them any sort of dopamine release? Sure. That's why I just said, an abuse of dopamine release. Mm. When you get into a cycle of constantly bitching and bitching and bitching about the same subject matter every time you meet with the same guy, he did this this week, he did that this week. What good did he actually do? Mm. And you only bring up the negative. And you're also making yourself a victim. Yes, victimizing. Yes. Mm. Making yourself the victim and he's the victimizer. Mm. Then unfortunately, that leads to great personality disorders. It leads to full-on psychosis. And part of that is the shame, blame, and guilt within yourself that you haven't dealt with as a woman. That's right. So any other questions from the chat room about, in general, the conversation topics we've been having? Go ahead and write them into the chat room. So one of the divine masculine's issues with aggressive women. So, Dale, you and I have been been around the block many, many times. And you have women who pick you. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. And they pursue you. And they pursue you in such a way that they make untruths about themselves to fit into your reality. What are those? I'd say. Or what would you describe those people as? The people who choose the, uh, to, to have untruths to fit their reality. To fit into your reality. Mm. Mastermind manipulators who always manipulate all the time just for their own way. Well, they're narcissists, really, aren't they? At the end yeah. of the day, they're using narcissistic tactics of manipulation and mm-hmm. so on. Care and rage syndrome. Yep, that's a good one. Mm. What about the pattern where women will get pregnant and keep a kid to pull a guy into a relationship and try and force the white picket fence family home sort of paradigm? That's the delusional life. Mm. And unfortunately, the man is just as responsible for getting them pregnant. Unfortunately, in this modern society, the laws give all the power to the woman and the courts are on the women to the point where the men are fully abused by the courts. And unfortunately, it's the unfortunate truth. Only in the last handful of years do you see mothers forced to get jobs and to live within their means so that they don't put a 90 percent garnish of wages on the men. And yes, 90 percent garnishment of wages. Very common to see that in modern society. Unfortunately, that's how the political systems have changed. And that keeps it to, keeps the white picket fence dream concept alive. Okay? And there are many men who have done that exact same thing to women. Okay? Get her off the market. She's mine now. Okay? 
I think also the thing, just going back to what we were saying before about the narcissism, we always, we've tended to associate that with the man. Yes. And yet it works equally the other way around, where a man like Dale say can be empathic and kind and caring, and that gets abused. But the 1970s Laura was far more innocent than she is today. Mm. And it took a long, long series of many relationships and confusions for you to gain a spine. You would agree with that. Absolutely. Totally agree. But at the same time, you didn't turn into a narcissist. No. Unfortunately, a lot of women who grew her spine were lost to spine too, were beaten into submission and forced into the narcissistic submersion so an immersion process until they became narcissists. Well, that's just for survival. You're doing that out of survival, right. aren't you? So right. I have used narcissistic Absolutely. tactics. Absolutely, but you've also healed from them. I have healed from that. Yeah. But yes, I recognize it, and I recognized it then, no. but could do nothing, nothing about really it. about it because the whole time I was trying to manipulate and survive. And have how many kids? Yeah. Okay, yeah. surviving with kids. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see how women can be put into that situation, Mm -hmm. but that's something that you need to grow out of. You need to get yourself self-empowered and find that authentic self. And what was that journey like for you, Laura? It was tough. It is a tough journey, and you've got to be disciplined in it. But, But then if you want an equal relationship, you know, that equal you exchange. You have to be equal to them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And they have to be equal to you. Otherwise, it's a codependent relationship. I reiterate something. No codependent relationship is ever good, even for the short term. Mm-hmm. Okay? And How you, you can had, a man help? Go on, Dale. Go on. You, you, had, ma- you had many um, relationships you saw, say, in the like 1960s, 1970s, where the woman would be codependent on the man and they just live with it all the life. Like I know a lot of people around me, close family members who have done that, even though they loved each other, there was a codependency there. And once that person died or that a relationship ended, it's like their life was over and they had to rebuild themselves, but it was too late to rebuild themselves. And you see that time and time again, especially with the older generations. Right. The abuse point created a critical mass in which, there was no coming back around of it short of an ayahuasca miracle. Yes. Okay? Or heavy-duty medication that fakes happiness. Okay, It has to be a full spiritual change. And there are people who not even that's going to change them because their vanity is in so much charge of them. It will change the spiritual message days, weeks, and months later, and the truth will be lost. Those are people in the full thrall of, of, the, of the psychosis. But you can also, you can lose yourself in a situation like that. Easy. Lose who you really are and who you really need to be to make the relationship work. And it sort of bounces from from one day to the next or one hour to the next. And And you can sort of see it. You know, there's sometimes a part of me that stood outside watching myself using the manipulation and narcissistic techniques um, and and being sort of semi-aware of it and not actually knowing what to do about it, not actually knowing how to get out of that cycle. That's right. Or so, recognize they're even in a cycle. Yes. See, the thing about psychosis is in deep levels of them, they have no idea that they're in it. They're creating a truth as self-validating validating the, the, the fake reality that they're creating. So how can the man heal from that type of entanglement, Woodland's asking, including the narcissism and co-creation of that? Oof. Is the man's journey any different? Unfortunately, it is radically different when a man encounters a woman who is a secret hater, it does stuff to you internally that only comes out subconsciously later. Example, you are sleeping next to a person you believe loves you and you're intimate with them and they sound perfect. They want it. And all of a sudden they turn vicious 
and show their true colors and everything you believe true and right about them suddenly becomes a demonic force that you've led into yourself in all forms of trust. Yes, that happens to women, but men heal from it radically different. You know, they heal from that completely different. And how? That first step is loving yourself, different than a woman loves themselves. A woman has to go through the pampering, the creations, the visions, and the dream. A man has to go through trusting his choice, his, his wisdom, his inner wisdom that brought somebody into those specialty places because you begin to lose so much of what you created with that person out of what you thought was equality. Do you have a like a broken faith with your own intuition? Sure, sure. And that, that's... Or worse, they try to become you. They try to steal who you are by taking your job, your this, your that, you know, all the things that you've spent lifetimes creating. They take half of this and that of that, and nothing is yours anymore. Nothing. And the damage, damaging of sexuality as well. That the yeah. damages the men in such a way that the the sexuality is so confused and it becomes traumatized, and and they start just letting down and turning off as well. Um, yeah, it's not nice. And, and unfortunately, that's why BDSM is such a healing thing for many men and women. Okay. It allows the aggression of, of betrayal to get out of the body and recreate a more natural passion for love. So wouldn't this apply to women and masculine? The answer is yes, but it's a completely different journey of healing. Men are of a completely different journey than healing. Retrusting that choice, that activated love with inside them. Women go through a different journey of that. How is it different? Give us some how is examples. it different? How is it different for you? To a man trusting yourself. Yeah, you have uh, more emotions than men. Do mm-hmm. you not? Yeah. Men yeah. have what emotion to drive them? Mm-hmm. Their creation, their legacy. Yeah. yeah. That legacy is destroyed. Yeah. You're creating a legacy with every breath you take. Mm. Men have to find that again mm. and create that again. The legacy for life. Yeah. Why do women have 700 more hormones in their body than men? It's what makes you women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the Moon Lodge teachings, women go within and recall their their energies every time they go through their their cycle. Men don't have that. Hmm. They have to go out and seek it from the land. So for women, it's an An internal internal journey. And for men, it's an external journey. Yeah, yeah. So Sarah says she's working through trusting her own choices right now. And it can be rough. It can Mm -hmm. be a rough journey. Working on that intuition. Working on your self-belief. Mm-hmm. But it also doesn't have to be so rough. You do choose your own difficulty level. It's how much do you put weight on yourself to force recovery versus allowing it a natural co-creative recovery Mm -hmm. that still holds yourself accountable. You do something every week, but not a thousand things a week to fix it. And that's the importance of simplifying your journey and not allowing it to be overloaded. Just one step at a time. That's what I did with my healing as well. There was so much to do when I was going through my addictions and all of that stuff. But it was just one day at a time and always looking at the day instead of thinking, holy shit, I've just got so much and too much to do. And you see that time and time again where people just get overloaded with stuff and they just end up giving up. Unfortunately, when this has happened, and it happens in many relationships, it does make um, men finding it difficult to trust again. Sure. Sure. Because men let women in differently than women let men in differently Mm. through different forms of journeys. Unfortunately, it's so hard for men to see the woman's point of view and so hard for women to see the men's point of view because we are biologically different. Mm. And our biological concepts change the nature of our perceptions.
So we've got more people engaging in the chat room. Go on down to that chat room, type a question in. There's a chance you guys get to interact with all of us. Yeah, be good to hear your questions. Okay, so let's talk about how children become part of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. Does a man attract secret hater women depending on thoughts and subconscious beliefs? Is a man confident? All right, so first thing first, you have a little mix-up of understanding. If a man is attracting something that is negative, it is not always them attracting it. It is karma. Karma is a real thing in dating and relationships. But you have to be recognizing what are the patterns of the karma. Unfortunately, a lot of men who are new to dating make those mistakes over and over again, and they have what's called a broken picker. Women get broken pickers and pick the wrong man all the time. That's, again, a karmic thing built into the lineage. Unfortunately, lineages attract other forms of common lineages. And that's the whole point of breaking the vicious karmic cycle. Does biology change? Hold on. Somebody was asking about transgender. How does that work for transgender? Well, the rest of the universe has more sexes than you can even begin to count. I've talked about in other shows where many races have six, seven, even eight sexes. But a lot of them don't change from one sex to another. They can. They can, but they choose not to because it's a journey of accepting the choice to become that fully. Because when you're born one way and discover something else is a truth about yourself, or you are born in one belief and then come to an understanding there is another belief, the journey of transgenderism is more spiritual than it is physical. And it is the spiritual transition that will allow the divinity of masculine or feminine to show through the body. And then is where you can use surgical assistance, hormone therapy, to complete that journey. Unfortunately, a lot of people in the transgender community, they have too many broken faith issues to make that final leap. And the handful that do not necessarily have regrets, have trauma in the transitional journey, which is something that's terrible for somebody that's going through that, which then creates a regret or a pain or a this or that, which is why it's so challenging in modern society for transgenderism, my personal belief, the worst thing that's with transgenderism is forcing it on everybody now, making it a political subject matter versus an independent growth process for each person, allowing them to go through their own unique healing with it without the, polit the world politics judging anything about them. I can tell you I've had more transgender people and gay people come to me now in the recentness of the woke ideology, terrified about their own views, about their own communities, that if they say something that, that isn't in alignment with the, the woke view, that they'll be, they'll, they'll be um, you know, excluded from the community. And again, that's the corruption of politics over truth thoughtful, spiritual, and physical debates about the truth of one person's soul. What is the so age in America? Asked about visectomy, what does that do? Well, absolutely it changes the nature of the thing. It stops pregnancy from happening and gives a higher form of confidence at times. How many generations does it take for the children to be born without ancestral karma? Every, every child born has ancestral karma that they come in to deal with. So you're never going to have somebody born without it. Unless they've spent a handful of lifetimes before this one to specifically make them karmic neutral, karmic free for one lifetime, which does happen often. So is it recognizing that in all relationships, there will be some karma that in some form of karma, to be right. resolved? Yeah. But it's recognizing, as you say, the patterns of that. Correct. It's your choice in this now, awakened aware being, to not be used by the past to create something that isn't in the future or to create something that is in the future and you repeat it. Taking the negative energy from the past and then falling into the cycle of repetition, which is then fed by the past, 
which accelerates the journey of a kar karmic journey between the two, which forces it to go bad like a venom. Also, if only one of the parents breaks the cycle, that's the other thing. Abuse is the two-parent process. How many children have abused and the mother never saw it? Or the mother and father never noticed that a family member did it to somebody else or a neighbor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Both sides are equally responsible to recognize the change in the child. If a major cycle of abuse is finally broken, does it lessen the karmic for the yes, it does. But it also requires a shaman of the present within the person going through the abuse to help clear the energetic scars of the karma. That's what's so that's why so many modern abuse karmas go through because there's not enough energetic healers to help them deal with the energy scars on the person themselves. So the karma continues in a, a lesser form. No, it doesn't consider it's 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 recognized. Mm but it isn't healed. Mm -hmm. okay. Recognition is one thing. Healing yeah. is another. It's what you're going to do. You've about got to it. heal the scar now. Mm -hmm. That's that's not even, I would say that's not even halfway. Mm -hmm. That's one third. Recognition mm -hmm. is one third. Mm -hmm. The other two thirds is to remove the scar, the scar tissue, the emotional abuse, and put the person back onto the right path of growth mm -hmm. and them to finish their life with the right path of growth mm -hmm. versus the altered negative karmic abuse growth which leads them down a whole different journey of expression. So if karma is no longer going to be a part of this world, how do you get rid of karma for a future life? You have to do it now to get rid of it for your future life. That's the whole point. Because the aim is a dharmic path. Correct. I like that. The work is never done. It just changes form. Yes, I've made that statement many times. <laughs> yes. Just changes form. Mm -hmm. It's true. How do you recognize scars? By looking at them and not pretending a scar isn't a scar. Look at it. Stop, stop forcing yourself to gaze away from it or to create something that isn't there. So is there still some triggering? Or you covered the trigger do. up. Mm. It's not a scar anymore. I healed it. I did my 10, 10 revocations and five Hail Marys. I should be perfectly healed mm. and never have to do it again. Liar. And yet the same thing keeps happening, right. but on a lesser scale. Mm. And you get the people who are too traumatized to see the scars as well. They just yes. don't want to look at them. No, because that requires the work, doesn't it? That yeah. requires the vigilance and the due diligence. That's right. How do you create a dharmic life? <laughs> we've been we've been going on about that for Andrew. Has, we've all been talking <laughs> about that for a long time. <laughs> well, all the, any of the last five thousand shows. Yeah. Yes, which of <laughs> self healing, yeah, self nurturing. It, it, yeah, but it also takes courage if you're in a karmic relationship doesn't it it takes courage to finish that karma and that might mean stepping away from that relationship all right so i'm going to take this next one okay so if i don't want to look at it then it might be an indicator it is an indicator if you don't want to look at it that's a blazing red light going look at me that i don't want to look at anything you don't want to look at is you're covering up the truth about it Yeah, I think one of those is looking for somebody else to complete what is lacking in you. Yes, the twin flame. Yeah, smile the heart. The twin flame will heal everything that's ever wrong with me. <laughs> no, bitch, if your twin flame ever showed up, like, what the fuck's wrong with you this lifetime? You were supposed to be fucking perfect. <laughs> and I made it this lifetime perfect. What's wrong with you? Next. Because <laughs> I have another twin flame. I got a backup. And it ain't you. <laughs> twin flame four. <laughs> Dream Flame 4, activate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Max, you're broken, bitch. <laughs> yes, Sarah. Oh, dear, Twin Flame. <laughs> That's another light worker. Garbage topic. Yes. <laughs> 
So how a woman processes sexual interaction with an imbalanced man who experienced sexual abuse from women? How is he conditioned towards women? Good question. How does a woman process sexual? First thing first, you don't process it. It's his job. You have to keep him engaged with you, not the image of the other person. You have to be the expressor and receiver of love, even if it is perverted. And it helped that person go through a reversion of perversion. You have to keep yourself separate than those who originally abused them. And the same thing goes for women who have been abused by men, especially at a young age. Fundamentally, the person is going to be different the rest of their life if they have abuse at a young age. It feels like it takes so much more energy to avoid your pain than actually feel it. So why do we as humans do that to ourselves? Because it's the easy route? Or you don't actually have to spend any real energy to fix it? That's right, Eric. My twin flame hates me. <laughs> <laughs> Did we do this one? How about if you're totally aware of the scars and not afraid to look at them, but don't know how to heal them? The thing is, you do know how to heal them. You're just a chicken shit. To do the work, hold the discipline, hold yourself accountable, get on a daily practice, get off of the no plan plan, make a plan, and all the other things I've talked about the last 10,000 shows, which can be a starting point for any way of doing the work. Start with one subject a week, one subject a month. Don't take on 50 subjects at once, thinking you can beat it all at once like a video game. Stop being arrogant to think, I can never heal it. And relationships will only expose them one way or another That's right. anyway. Ignore it, it'll go away. Yeah, like cancer. <laughs> you can't. I mean, you've got to do the work. That's where the courage comes in. So when every time somebody goes, I don't know how to do the work, I put, I have a facepalm moment. Mm -hmm. Okay? Laura, in your journey, did you not know how to do the work? Yeah, I did. Okay? Yeah. Tell them your journey. Dale, same with you. The work. The work, facing up to what's going on in your situation. We said just now that relationships reflect that back to you as well. You can mm -hmm. see in your relationships um, where you're amiss, where you have to look at yourself and call yourself into question. You know, it's always those healed relationships or re better relationships are created when you are both healing on a self-healing journey. And that is calling yourself out, putting a, a, one of your light bodies outside of you to observe and call it back in with all, all the wisdom, all that sacred neutral wisdom it's observed and highlighting it. And then I've had some real aha moments then. Did, did I really behave like that? Did I really do that? Why am I behaving like that? Well, what can I take it back to? Is it something that happened in my childhood? Go back over the years. And you've got to allow yourself to have an ego death as well. So many people are stuck in their e ego and their own self and their own kind of stewing that they can't, pe can't see past their own self. And that's something I had to go through was being honest with myself and stopping to be lazy. So many people out there are fake it to make it. It's not everyone, but there are a lot of people who say they're spiritual, but they don't actually do trauma work, body work, relaxation work. Um, and it's just all words to them. And that was something I had to learn was actually putting the effort in, taking time off as well to stop obsessing and doing spirituality seven days a week because you're only going to get burnt out. And simplifying everything, like I said earlier, is so important. An hour a day, 20 minutes a day, just something you can start adding towards your journey. Then over a period of two years of you sticking to that plan, just think how much inner work you've done and how different you're going to be on the other side. And that's something I learned through journeying, uh, journaling and so on 
uh, each year growing and growing. Like this year for me, I've grown even more. I'm learning new ways of thinking, coming out the old ways of thinking into the new ways of thinking. And we have laughs about it all the time because sometimes the mind and the self can be just stuck on that one track. But sometimes you've got to have hindsight and foresight and look through the eagle eye of things as well. Okay, so we've got a question from Mystic Mouse on Rumble. Do you have any recommendations for a long-term couple who both still have love for each other and want to restore relationship harmony? They're also expecting a baby and who are both experiencing, both experiencing. So if you've already reached the point where you know the relationship is challenged, but you can't take a break because you have a baby coming, is where you have to delve into the sexuality. And unfortunately, sexuality and birth birthing are very important. Every doctor, every doula will tell you of even up to month eight, you should be engaging in multiple sexual experiences per day. It will make the birth more easy, the health of the baby, mother and father better. And here is where you have to have the enjoyment of sex talk. And it's not about the raw penetration. It's what completes the totality of that experience. So diving into the sexuality, because after the birth, there's going to be a long time before any real sexuality can happen that is enjoyable for the woman. Okay? So you're also going to have to discover what are some alternative ways of getting a release post-sexuality well, then a kid's hanging off a nipple and you don't want to change your energy. You don't want the child to feel the sexuality. And unfortunately, a lot of women go through that. And that's where they shut down their men. Now, for you being in a long-term relationship and discovering that you have to restore something, what went wrong? That's the first thing you both have to agree on. What part of your side is the mistake? Don't blame them anymore. Accept your part. He accepts his part. And by accepting the individual parts of what went wrong allows you to build a new bridge of togetherness. Okay? You're expecting a baby. Step one is sexuality. But again, it's not about raw carnalism anymore. It's about the totality of the experience. Now, outside of the sexuality, okay, you're going to have to determine the new relationship moving forward. Over-talking on one side or the other is terrible. One side, the man has to be heard, then the woman has to be heard, and everyone has to have the last word. If you're a type of person, or both people are a type of person that has to have the last word, no one ever has the last word, you then hold a grudge. You have to break the rule of last word. And that's just called being humble. But you should not be forced to eat humble pie every day. That's my advice for you, Mystic Mouse. Laura, do you have anything you want to add to that? Well, on the other side of the coin of talking, you can also use talking. You can use talking as a form of intimacy, but not heavy discussion, like right. you're saying, not not arguing but intimacy and turning each other on just, just through talking. Poems about each other. Mm. Okay? Before television and the internet, people wrote poems about each other. Oh, your beauty is the greatest of the nights in the sky, and the rose's thorn tapped my blood, and I realized how much I loved you. Okay? <laughs> I drew a picture of you. Yeah, it's a stick figure, but it's better than nothing, right? Or you actually drew a really good picture of a person. So we've got here, um, why do predatorial female educators get a slap on the wrist versus male counterparts? A lot of politics, unfortunately. Mm. The man is more wrong than the woman ever will be. And it's only recently do those predatorial women get actual real jail time. I mean, it used to be in the past there were no real women's jails. They were just insane asylums that they put them in. Up until the 50s and 60s, there were no real women's jails. They just put them into an asylum, literally. Or they were then experimented on and abused by the psychologists of the era. What's worse? <laughs> What's worse? Okay. <laughs> okay. 
and that thing where the the men are always wrong is again of that abuse of the 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 beautiful proper divine feminine aspect mm. of vulnerability where they're using it to be victims yes the need to have that last word is a terrible destructor destructive process in many families how do you break it for yourself let them have it <laughs> yeah. without vengeance in my word in my next word <laughs> Okay, that's being humble. That's the and, truth of being humble. And one of, one of the biggest things as well is mistakes. Knowing that you make mistakes and you're in the wrong at time. Not in the wrong, but you've made a mistake. And something I learned, what grew me, was always owning up to my mistakes and saying, look, I made a mistake, I was wrong. So many people have a hard time just fucking doing that. Just by saying I'm wrong and, and this. Uh, it completely changes it because you realize you've got the power you f but you kind of like give it away all the time, but you actually have your power once you own for your mistakes. A lot of people don't do it. Yeah, and often the ego won't let you be that humble. Because in the other times they did, somebody abused that situation. Oh, you finally admit you made a mistake. Nya, 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 nya. Mm -hmm. Okay? And therefore they're never going to admit a mistake again because you just abused that moment where the church was trying to be authentic to you. Yeah, not accepting the apology right. grace, gracefully. Yes, thank you. But no more word need to be said. Thank you for the apology. Mm. So, Rosanna, many of my relatives don't want to admit the truth, but rather say they've made peace with the things they've said and done. That Which makes is all me bullshit. sad. Yeah. Which is all bullshit. Yeah. They have made no peace with it. They're just trying to forget it ever happened. Yeah, not dealing you, with it. You see not that I've, up to it. I've had that in my family where, um, you know, some shit goes down and just no one says anything and you kind of like it just stews for about a day. <laughs> just for a month or a year. Or a month, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just just goes, no one talks about it again, but it's fucking there in the environment. You're like, fuck, someone going to talk the about The elephant in the room, but it all gets swept under the carpet. Yes. Well, guys, let's call it an end to the show. We would like, like everybody to go hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment. That really helps the algorithm a lot. Uh, bring up your situation relationship. What do you think is wrong with the divine feminine and the divine masculine? And we will be doing another show, What's Wrong with the Divine Masculine, so everyone knows. <laughs> okay? Yeah, that would be good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So how can so Andrew, how can people get a hold of you for a session? Sure, they go to my website, andrewbartis.com. If they want a session, we have a brand new automated booking session where you just go there, pick your date, your time, and everything goes through automatically. Your link is directly sent to you. We will also be having the next mentorship um, process being emailed out. So please go and sign up for the email list at andrewbartis.com. Laura, beautiful. Laura. Okay, so if you'd like to get hold of me, it's twofeathersmedicine.com. Um, and if you go on there and you see the combined healing link, you can also find out more about what we're doing with combined healing. We'll be adding the high food to that possibly in April and another um, set of days in April, probably in York for the combined healing if you're interested in that as well. Beautiful. And if you'd like any soul surgery with myself, if you feel yourself is stuck and you can't get out of your own way, go head over to daletobin.com where I'm offering soul surgery and psychic surgery. I'll be also offering a new treatment very soon, so lots of cool things to come. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Andrew and Laura, good night, good evening. Thank you. All right, everybody. We'll catch you this coming Thursday. Thank you. Bye. Okay.